It's the Van Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And today, today we have Fernie. Are you ready for this? Oh, I know. Today we have a very special guest. We have Lauren Long. Say hello, Lauren. Hello, hello. Lauren. With Lauren, thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you, Van. Thanks for having me. This Absolutely. is exciting for me. Well, we, we are here to learn about you. And so, oh, just, first off, tell us, where are you from? I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Get out of town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Lauren, we brought you on the show because you're an artist. Yes. We want to learn how you decided to become an artist. Like, when you realized, hey, I like doing this art stuff a little bit more than the other kids or the other adults, depending on when you, when you came about. Well, I, I, I didn't have the, the benefit of growing up in a family where my parents were artists and we didn't know artists and it was a very conventional childhood, but I started becoming, really getting into art and realizing that it was kind of something that I was better at than um, certain other subjects in school. And probably seventh grade was the time where I first thought, this is what maybe I'm meant to do with my life. Oh, wow. But again, didn't have a family to, to point me that way. So I went to college, I went to high school, I took every art class because it was fun. It was what I was passionate about. Every art class in seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, all through high school. Then I went to the University of Kentucky and majored in five different things. Whoa. And finally, in the last year, I decided to become an illustrator because I took all the electives in my in my college um, education, and they were always art. It was design and uh, pottery and sculpture and painting and drawing, and I just realized I'm an illustrator. Wow! And so, um, when like early on, like when you were talking about like middle school years, yeah. When you, when you were really discovering this, right. was there anybody at your school that was like encouraging, like a teacher, or um, is there anybody you remember that really kind of like helped you along? Yeah, I, I feel it, I remember it. It's, it's such an easy answer, Mr. Pennington. Mr. Pennington. Mr. Pennington, Jesse Clark Junior High School, Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, Mr. Pennington was the coolest man in the building. You know why? Why is that? because he was the head football coach. Ah. He was a big mountain of a man, the coolest person around. Now, ordinarily, I was very small and slight as a seventh grader. Ordinarily, I would never meet the football coach, but I had an in because Mr. Pennington was also the art teacher. Oh, wow, really? And he's the first person, aside from my mother and maybe some classmates, that took my drawing at the front of the class and showed the other students. Whoa. And I remember he said my name. And I'll never forget that because Mr. Pennington was so cool. I would, I'm curious yes. because I, we've interviewed a lot of authors on this show mm -hmm. and kind of a common thread, although there are a few unicorns, but mostly a lot of them got a ton of rejections up front before they got that one publisher that said yes. Now, what was your story like for your first publication? Okay, so I was a little different. I got into publishing by working about 10 or 15 years after school for magazines and greeting cards and broad-based forms of illustration. So I was doing artwork and eventually I worked up to where I was doing work for national magazines living in Cincinnati, Ohio, like Sports Illustrated and Time. Cool. And I had kind of cultivated a, a specific style of art that was recognizable. and. Um, so what happened for me was I started to get offers from art directors to do book covers for young oh. adult novels. And I did those book covers for several years until finally <clears throat> a publisher said, hey, this Lauren Long's art might be good for a picture book that they had, a picture book manuscript. Wow, so you, you didn't even have to really like, you weren't putting yourself out there. They, they came to you. Like, well, that's incredible. That, that sounds very, you know, incredible and glamorous thank you van but <laughs> but it it really was from me putting my work out there that's interesting yes. you use that putting i put my work out there just in a different uh a format sure. or a different market and they found me through that so you have a long-running series of books about a tractor yes a tractor named otis otis that's right otis the tractor yeah and 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 i'm curious what, what made you decide to pick a tractor as your main character? 
Okay, so Van, that's a good question because I, I began my children's book career illustrating other people's stories. I never viewed myself as an author, as a writer. Oh, wow. Um, but I did have ideas, and after I published a few books illustrating other people's stories, I had an editor who's kind of like a teacher, kind of works with you, and she asked me if I had any ideas of my own. And my wife, Tracy, and I had my two little boys used to tell stories and make up stories while they were driving in the car. And one of them, they were a bunch of messy stories, one of them was about a tractor who saves a calf. Oh. But it was a friendship between the tractor and the boy, the, the farmer's son. And I was like, what about that tractor? They had a different name, their story was unorganized, it had no three part, you know, beginning, middle, end. Sure. It was a mess, so I took it in my hands and drafted what we now know as Otis. I named Otis after one of my, a character in my favorite TV show growing up, the Andy Griffith show. Oh yeah. And, um, and yeah, and then I illustrated it and we ended up having six uh, hardcover stories. Now you, now you don't just write Otis books though. You brought a different oh, no. book today. Yeah, so. Um, this is your new book, right? Absolutely, this is my brand new book. It's called The Yellow Bus. This bus that was abandoned in a goat, a, a field, uh, a paddock filled with goats. Huh. It's rusted, sinking in the mud, torn down and abandoned. And I asked myself the question, how did that bus get there? What was its life like? And I really started, my answers started really giving me the story we now know as the yellow bus. I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of what it says. It's very minimal with text. So as the illustrator, I didn't have to write a lot of words. Right. Because I knew I was going to paint the words and draw the words. So it was great fun. I, I'm very proud of it. That's amazing. Can, can you show us one of the pictures from the inside? Oh, yeah. Well, one of my favorite things, Van, is look, this is, this is a dust jacket. Yeah. And a dust jacket basically pr protects the case cover. So one of my, my favorite things about this book, if I do say so myself, is the case cover. Ooh. Wow, that's great. I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, so I, I used charcoal and acrylic paint, and here's some of the images. Oh, these are beautiful. Here's one of my favorite images of the yellow bus oh, with yeah. goats. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> so is that is that pretty much like how you found the one the, the one in real life? Yeah, I, I just running along and asking myself questions about it. And so this book takes place in about 60 years and you can see the entire setting for the book at the beginning. Uh-huh. And readers can study this there's no words on this spread but you can still read this page with your with your eyes so lauren we're almost out of time for the yeah. interview yeah um but i do want to play a game with you before we go okay are you down i'm down all right so we're gonna play truth or dare truth or dare have you played this before i've played before yeah. okay good not with you no, no 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 but 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 you're familiar with how the game works yes i am okay then i will present you with the question truth or dare Dare. Oh, that was quick. Dare. Right. You, you knew that right off the top of your head. All right, well yeah. then, for dare, we're going to do offhand portrait. So are you left-handed or right-handed? Right. Be honest. Okay. I'm a righty. Right. So with your left hand, I want you to draw a portrait of me in 30 seconds. Oh my goodness. Something worthy of my refrigerator. Of your refrigerator? That's right. This may not be my best work. Well, it'll, it'll be the best work you've done drawing a picture of me with your left hand. I'll give it 100%. There we go. You ready? Okay. Okay, are you going to hold still? Oh, perfect. I could work <laughs> on that a lot more. All right, are you ready to show it to the camera? Yes. All right, let's see it. Right there? For the center camera. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> That's really cute. I like that. Is that worthy of your refrigerator? Absolutely. What do you think, Fernie? <laughs> Oh, don't be so critical. It's really good. Oh. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I'll sign it with my left. Oh, you're going to left-handed signature. I love it. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Lauren. Thank you, Van. Thanks for having me, and uh, thank you to the Austin Public Library. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.